border security crisis. There are currently more than 6,000 National Guard troops patrolling our border with Mexico. But just what are the Guard's rules of engagement? An Arizona National Guard spokesman said, we don't apprehend, we don't detain, we don't transport. Arizona legislators also want to know just what the Guard's role is, and today they held a hearing on the National Guard's border role. And joining me now is Ward Nichols, Arizona Homeland Security Chairman, and thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, part of the um, hearing today was to sort out what exa exactly happened. What did we establish at today's hearing on what happened? Well, un unfortunately, what we established today is that the National Guard are there on the border as basically window dressing. They can't do anything. They, all they do is radio in positions of illegals when they're coming across the border. Uh, they can't engage. Um, they can't, uh, you know, apprehend, detain. I mean, they're, they're there basically just to uh, uh, radio, in, radio in positions. Now, you have said that the, uh, that the uh, gunman who crossed over from the Mexico side of the border uh, appeared to be testing the resolve of the National Guard. Explain a little bit what you, what you mean by that. Yes, based off the stories that we got, and from General Ratajczak today, an exact account of the story, um, I believe that these were paramilitary personnel uh, in Kevlar vests carrying automatic weapons coming in to test the resolve of what the National Guard are going to do in these situations. Test to, uh, test to see, you know, what their response is, is when they come across the border w in these type of situations. And we found out today that the rule, with rules of engagement and the type of things that they have to uh, uh, adhere to, that our National Guard men and women on the border are, 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 in my opinion, at terrible risk. Their their rules of engagement are terrible. Their hands are tied. The rules of engagement are what? They must retreat, correct, and cannot engage? Basically, yes. They have to. There, there's, there's three or four different things that they have to do uh, in process. And um, uh, basically, the, in a nutshell, they cannot do anything until fired upon. Mm -hmm. Now, this area, tell us a little bit about this area and what kind of people might be coming across. Well, in this type of area, it's out uh, near Sasabe, and uh, in this area, there's a lot of uh, coyote human smuggling going on. Uh, there's, there's drugs that are coming across the border, and now in this uh, particular situation, we believe it was some type of paramilitary personnel. Mm -hmm. And um, and there was no engagement whatsoever. Well, the, the again from General Ratajczak's report, one of the armed gunmen got within about 30 feet of one of our guardsmen, and they were standing there looking at each other, rifles in hand. And at that point, that's when our National Guardmen uh, uh, went to a different position in a defensive position. They withdrew and called in. Yes, they called in border border guard. Yeah, and, and that's another thing that we learned in the hearing today that our border guard, our border patrol are there basically taking care of our National Guard. I think it's a little reversed. Our National Guard men and women are trained military personnel, yet they have to call the Border Guard, the Border Patrol, and are unable to do anything. Mm -hmm. Now this um, National Guard uh, uh, operation is called Operation Jumpstart. It's $760 million so far. Do you think that that's a waste of money, or do you think that's effectively spent? You know, I, I can't say it's a complete waste of money because we, we have gotten reports that they have been able to help uh, Border Patrol apprehend and detain these people. But again, I would venture to say that if we use that money more wisely and we are able to put them there in a primary role, able to do the duties of the Border Patrol, um, we would have much more success in securing our borders. Now, this, uh, this particular group of National Guard troops were commended for their action. Do you think that that's... Uh something that should have been done. They were commended uh, not only by the National Guard, but Arizona's governor's office for their action. Yes, I, I wouldn't want to belittle what the soldiers did in any shape, way, or form. They were following out their directives and their orders, but that's what we were looking at today. What are their directives and what are their orders and what are their rules of engagement? And I would venture to say that, they, that the rules of engagement and their directives must be changed. Now, this is a state hearing, but uh, what would you like to see happen? I would like to see more awareness about this issue brought forward, that, 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 that people understand that our men and women on the border are at risk every day because of the directives of the federal government and because of the directives of the governors that they have signed on to in order to have the National Guard at the border. And, and, and they're putting their lives online and uh, we've got to untie their hands. Now this is not just a state issue because this border stretches across many states. Um, is there any thinking that perhaps a few states could get together and start to re-examine the rules of engagement? I, I would love uh, the four border states to get together and uh, you know look at the 
the rules of engagement and look at what the Border Patrol is doing on the, go on the border. We know the governor of Texas uh, just this last week uh, uh, signed a decree basically putting another 600 plus uh, Texas National Guard on the border to, to act more in a primary role there and to be able to ride along with Border Patrol and assist. And that may be partially the way to go, but I don't think it goes far enough yet. Mm -hmm. In this hearing today, any input from Washington, and are you happy with the support you're getting from Washington? Uh, no, we didn't get any input from Washington, and, and, and quite frankly, unfortunately, Washington in their federal policies, immigration policies, border security policies, have failed us miserably here in Arizona, and we've got to do something about it. Any next steps decided on today? You know, I, I, I did tell the general in the hearing today that we would like to have him back at some point as we let some of the thoughts simmer and understand what was said and uh, we hope to get more answers as we continue to uh, uh, mow through this process and be able to again make good policy decisions that we can bring awareness of the issue to the forefront. In the interim would more National Guard troops help the situation? Um, you know we asked the general that and uh, he didn't really quite have an answer for us on that issue. Um, uh, he said that he's apolitical, he's not going to get into the policies and the politics of it and that he's just there uh, carrying out orders. Well, sometimes politics has to be practical. That, Thanks very yes. much for joining us this Thank evening you, and explaining it to Representative Ward Nichols. Thank you. A reminder now to vote in tonight's poll. Should U.S. companies be allowed to sell equipment used for censorship to communist countries?